Bestbookbits.com presents Value Investing from Graham to Buffett and Beyond Book Summary. From the guru to Wall Street's gurus comes the fundamental techniques of value investing and their applications. Bruce Greenwald is one of the leading authorities on value investing. Some of the savviest people on Wall Street have taken his Columbia Business School executive education course on the subject. Now this dynamic and popular teacher with some colleagues reveals the fundamental principles of value investing. The one investment technique that has proven itself consistently over time. After covering general techniques of value investing, the book proceeds to illustrate their applications through profiles of Warren Buffett, Michael Price, Mario, Gabriello, and other successful value investors. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of value investing. This book is a comprehensive guideline on stock evaluation and differences among methods used by generations of investors under the basic concept value investing. Value investing is buying stock at a discount price below its intrinsic value. A gap between purchase price and intrinsic value is margin of safety that helps to absorb risks and mistakes in the valuation process. Some highlights separate value investors from speculators. Value investors operate in the circle of competencies. They tend to choose securities of companies that they can easily learn about and have a low, reasonable price. Most of value investors are micro-fundamentalists. Their research on promising investments has a bottom-up approach. They start by looking at stock one by one. Process of investing includes answering five important questions. What securities? Their intrinsic values? Margin of safety? Price to buy? when to sell, the book emphasizes the second question. Number one, screening techniques. When screening a potential investment, there are four types of variables investors can consider. Fundamental, technical, combined variables, and market capitalization. Number one, fundamental variables focus on economics of the business, not market opinions about it, e.g. ROE slash ROI, growth in EPS slash sales, assets, and profit margins. Historical data shows that firms with in low level of these ratios tend to provide high returns in the future. Number two is technical variables are totally opposite to fundamental ones when their concentrations are trend lines and market momentum. This is not what value investors pay much attention to. Number three, combined ones mixed the above two types of variables together. They are ratios such as P over E, P over CF, P over B and P over S, and dividend yield. Again, firms having low results in those ratios seem to provide higher return than those with higher variables. Number four, market capitalization concerns sizes of companies and their likeliness to outperform. In general, small companies tend to offer more bargains than big firms do. With the development of the internet and spread of value investing philosophy, it is not easy to spot a promising investment nowadays. However, as the author wrote, investors can consider some circumstances when opportunities are likely to emerge. Small or spin-off companies can give precious chances to invest because they often obscure securities, probably missed by professional investors. That does not mean these companies are not good, just as their financial statements are a bit confusing and slash or ambiguous. Plus, the size of those firms is small, has discouraged professional investors from rigorous research on those securities. Under the same logic, investors can consider boring businesses that are making slow growth and modest profits. They are unlikely to attract much attention from the market, thus any of their positive changes in operations, management, etc. are unnoticed. In addition, investors can think of stock that is undesirable by the market and thus mispriced. Those are securities of businesses having financial distress, overcapacity, and legislative punishment all lagging behind markets. Some problems lead to dead ends, but some only exist temporarily. Markets lack of ability to estimate the impact of businesses' troubles, and its overreaction sometimes results in a deep discount of stock price, which is an opportunity for value investors to purchase. Of course, those opportunities need to go hand-in-hand with low-slash-reasonable stock prices and profitable catalysts in order to benefit investors in the future. Number two, intrinsic value. The authors did not include discount cash flow, DCF model, and multiple based method in their consideration, despite the two are very popular in stock evaluation and are commonly taught at business schools. P 
because DCF, which requires the estimation of future cash flows in the next 10 years and beyond, seems too risky, if not impossible, to implement without mistakes. No one can accurately predict what will happen in the business, industry, and economy in the next decades. Meanwhile, this method depends on accuracy of variable. Any small change in the value of underlying assumptions can cause a big change in the calculated intrinsic value. Multiple based methods using combined variables as we mentioned above to estimate intrinsic value also have several problems in it. Typically, investors tend to take earnings EBITDA or EBIT of their target companies multiplied by a variable of comparable firms on stock market. In other words, they are pricing securities based on someone else's uncertain projection for another company. Secondly, we all know that it is hard to find 100% comparable companies to have enough confidence in the multiplication results. Finally, this method fails to employ fundamental economies of the companies like profit margin, competitive advantage, etc. Two broad categories of methods mentioned in the book are value of assets and earnings power value, EPV. You have the intrinsic value, then value of assets, Grahams and Dodds net nets, book value, liquidation cost, reproduction cost, earning power value, less conservative. 2.1 value of assets, Graham and Dodds net nets, intrinsic value equals current assets, book value, take away liabilities, book value. Comment, the underline of this formula is that companies are in a non-viable or declining industry that they are going to sell assets and get out of the business soon. This formula assumes that only current assets, which are liquid and marked to the market, are valuable when companies are going out of business. This way of calculating intrinsic value is simple. However, nowadays it's hard or even impossible to find stock at that low price because Graham's idea has been out for decades and computers make any calculations become easy. Book value. Intrinsic value equals total assets, book value, take away liabilities. Comment. The authors did not mention much about this method, but they said its result of intrinsic value is hard to beat. It is still a conservative and simple way to estimate value, but it is any way more open than the net nets. Liquidation cost and reproduction cost. Idea behind liquidation cost supposes that the company under consideration is operating in a declining industry, which is the same in the above two methods. Nevertheless, this method gives some values to properties, plants and equipment, PPE, while well, still assumes that intangibles and highly specialized assets have no value at all. On the other hand, reproduction means company is in a viable, going industry, so it will be last for a long time. However, this kind of industry is highly competitive and having no barrier to entry. Therefore, the value of the company or stock will depend on how much a newcomer has to spend in order to operate in the market. With this way of calculation, we give some values for intangibles because newcomers must pay some time and money to build brands, R&D, or customer relations in order to have a position in the industry. Picture below illustrates how to apply liquidation and reproduction cost into estimating value of stock. I means or. For some items on the balance sheet, there is more than one way to estimate their values. Sometimes it's helpful to ask for valuation from industry experts. Liquidation value, current asset, cash. No discount because it is short term and marked to market. Marketable securities, no discount because it is short term and marked to market. Accounts receivables, net, may not be covered in full. Inventories, the more common what are they like, the less discount necessary, call an expert to evaluate. Total current asset, PPE. Knowledge of real estates and equipment is required. General assets, buildings, etc. are worth more than specialized assets, call an expert. Goodwill, no value. Deferred taxes, no value. Total asset, minus liabilities, current liabilities. Note payable, book value. Account payable, book value. Accrued expenses, book value. Current portion of long-term bond, bond value slash may be worth less than the PV because interest rate yield might increase. Total current liabilities, long-term debt, book value. Total liabilities, intrinsic value. Reproduction cost, current asset, cash. No discount because it's short term and mark to market. Marketable securities, no discount because it is short term and mark to market. Account receivables, 
added back amount of receivable that will be never converted because new firms starting out might have to pay that as well. Average of similar firms. Inventories. If inventory turnover increases from last year's turnover, subtract the increase in days, assuming that those increasing inventory will never sell or will sell at close out price. Slash inventory accounting method, FIFO and LIFO. If market prices increase, add value to the inventory's book value because new firms need to pay more money at higher prices to reproduce inventory. Prepaid expenses, book value. Total current asset. PPE, use market price of land, knowledge of RE and equipment is required. General assets, buildings, etc. are worth more than specialized assets. Call an expert. Goodwill, depend on the source of goodwill so the value will be adjusted up or down. Thus, we need info and industry knowledge. Get the timing of payments and reductions. Deferred taxes. Adjust it based on the sales on market. Value getting out of those investments, e.g. land pricing. Other investments. Total asset. Add back R&D. Depends on product's lifespan. SGA. Depends on the number of periods and years it takes to take orders and make sales, including advertising, promotion, customer relationships, distribution channels, often one to three years of operating. Value of patents slash licenses based on private market pricing minus liabilities. Current liabilities, note payable, book value, accounts payable, book value, accrued expenses, book value, current portion of long term, book value slash market value, especially use. Total current liabilities, book value slash market value, especially important when valuing highly leveraged companies. Long term debt. Total liabilities equals intrinsic value. 2.2, earning power value, EPV. Intrinsic value equals EPV, adjusted current earnings times 1R, take away debt, interested bearing, plus cash in excess of operating requirement. R equals cost of capital. The important assumption of this method is that the current earning level will last forever. It eliminates any potentially growing earnings, however, according to the book, can be applied in both non-viable and viable industries, even growing industries. Firstly, we have to figure out what type of earnings to use. In this case, it is EBIT, after tax. There are four adjustments needed to make. Rectify any accounting misrepresentations that are unconnected to normal operations. For instance, if there is a year where a company spent high one-time charges, we find average ratio of those charges, bare to reported earnings before adjustments and have them averaged out. Add back depreciation slash amortization expenses and subtract maintenance capital expense. Maintenance capex. Maintenance capex can be calculated based on capital expenditure, which is reported in cash flow statement and growth rate in sales. Capital expenditures consist of growth capex and maintenance capex. We have growth capex equals average perhaps in five years, PPE slash total sales, times increase or decrease in sales in term of dollar. Maintenance capex equals reported capital expenditure, take away growth capex. Take into account business circle, reduce reported earnings companies is at its peak and vice versa. Raise earnings if the company is in a trough. Thus, we could smoother the earnings trend. Any other adjustments? To estimate R, we base the weighted asset cost of capital using after tax cost of debt and equity. Number three, comparison between value of assets and EPV. Three scenarios happen when we calculate value of assets and EPV to measure intrinsic value of a specific company. EPV, take away value of assets. EPV equals value of assets and EPV plus value of assets. In any case, however, we will employ EPV as a benchmark for the intrinsic value. Depending on each case, EPV will be adjusted a bit. When EPV is smaller than the value of assets, it is possibly attributable for two reasons. Firstly, the industry is having excess overcapacity, so the number of products consumed is less than of produced. Secondly, management of the company may not be effective in using assets to generate incomes. When EPV is equal to value of assets, there is no doubt that we can use either one as intrinsic value. In this scenario, the industry is 
supposedly competitive and the management is average. Finally, EPV is larger than the value of assets due to some reasons. The industry is not so competitive with barriers of entry somehow exist. Or the company is possessing competitive advantages that help it employs assets efficiently and generates high profits. Another factor may be the high quality of management in the company. We will look into competitive ad advantage in the next chapter. Whichever scenario happens, we have to check back and forth between numerical results and information that supports those results. If a company is on the verge of bankruptcy but has EPV higher than the value of assets, perhaps something is wrong. On the other hand, if we are sure about our techniques and EPV is still high, we must explore what factors that help the company gain superior returns and whether those factors are strong and sustainable. When the EPV is bigger than the value of assets. When the EPV is bigger than the value of assets, the company is creating a special value called value of franchise, which explains why EPV is high. Value of franchise. In order to create value of franchise, the company must possess strong and sustainable competitive advantage. Those advantages can be found in or out of the company's control. External favored condition, such as exclusive license provided by the government, can generate some advantages. Internal factors are those that influence revenue and cost the two components to calculate new side companies' products that are high in demand in the market will produce large revenue. High demand may be a result of consumption purchasing habits, as in Coke's case. Revenue also endures if the cost of switching to alternative is expensive to customers. In some industries, customers are resist of any change in product used. For instance, office software. They do not want any change because it is expensive, complicated, and risky. Thus, strong customer loyalty is an important factor that contributes to a success of a company. Second, in the cost side, the lower operating cost, the higher profit company can earn. Hence, many companies want to save cost or use money efficiently. They can do it if they have special production techniques or products that competitors cannot match. They also may gain exclusive knowledge in making things efficiently by having technology or human-based skills. Third, cheap resources, especially labor and capital, can save significant cost. Finally, economies of scale, high fixed cost and minimal variable cost can make unit production cost reduce as long as sales increase. However, an economy of scale does not work in some cases. If firms with the same sizes of operations competing against each other, then they will have the same economies of scale, but the market at the moment does not need to absorb such a huge amount of product. Thus, competition is tense between big firms in this case. Another scenario that diminishes economies of scales is when technology changes so fast and affects profitability of companies in certain industries. Because the firms always need to spend money investing in business, cost advantage is short-lived. Furthermore, companies with economies of scale should use their power effectively by employing aggressive pricing power so they could make full use of price opportunities. Value of growth. Some firms with value of franchise possess another value called value of growth. When growing in, earning is bigger than incremental cost of capital to support the growth. To many value investors, this value of growth is uncertain because of two main reasons, so they are not willing to pay for it. First, it is difficult to forecast specific growth rate in earnings in the future. Second, that growth must be profitable. It is uncertain that for how long growth in earnings can remain to be bigger than incremental cost. Thus, in the case of suspiciousness, investors can buy stock at its full EPV and consider value of growth as margin of safety. Thus, we have a formula. PV of cash flow over EPV equals margin of safety in which PV equals invested capital times ROC slash G slash RG. EPV equals invested capital times ROC over R. ROC equals return on capital equals ROE or ROIC. ROIC equals operating earnings slash operating asset debt plus capital. G, growth in sales or earnings or both. Therefore, as long as ROC is bigger than R, increase in growth can generate additional value. Number four, constructing a portfolio. Diversification in constructing a portfolio is a way to reduce risks caused by volatility in stock prices. To value investor, however, they usually have more concentrated portfolios. 
According to them, risks do not come from volatility in stock prices, but is the possibility of losing money. Volatility, in contrast, creates great chances for investors to buy discount stock. They also argue that correlation of securities is hard to predict. Strength or weaknesses of correlation depends on how many factors, and that may be changed due to events or crisis. Value investors are more confident in their concentrated portfolios, partly because they tend to operate within the boundaries of their competencies and invest in companies they can understand. Moreover, they are careful in choosing stock and sure that there is an adequate margin of safety. Large margin of safety is a good solution to limit risks. To build up their confidence, they look for credible confirmation of their opinion. Knowledgeable insiders and famous investors' actions are two sources to look at. In addition, value investors need to ask themselves critical questions. Why not other investors are in the market pile in to move up prices of bargain stock? Is there a value trap when the prices is never going to increase? To build a concentrated portfolio, investors can impose a limit that they will not buy a security if they are not willing to invest a meaningful amount in it, approximately 5% of portfolio. This position limit will help them to be cautious in selecting and evaluating the security since the money involved is large. In case of excess money but there is no investment opportunity available, investors can spread it among existing investments or put it in index funds. Index funds in general will give investors greater return than hard cash. And that's a wrap on the book summary of Value Investing. Check out a YouTube channel with over 500 video book summaries uploaded previously. Like the video, comment on what you think, and if there's a book you want us to do a summary on, comment below. Check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you'll find over 500 video book summaries to read offline and download in the PDF in categories from biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate relationship sales, spirituality, success, time management, and travel. If you're into the audio version, check out mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits, where you'll find over 500 audiobook summaries to listen to at your pleasure. Follow us on Instagram for daily motivational quotes and book summaries. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this. Go out there and build up your portfolio with value investing. Take care. Bye-bye now.